Hey you guys, welcome to Q&A Thursday. I have a really fun topic for you today that I've been asked about several times. So this is kind of a general um, A to your Q about self-massage techniques or myofascial release techniques that you can do on your own without having to go to a massage therapist or physical therapist. Now, that being said, it's really great to go to a skilled professional who has been trained and it is worth every penny to get an amazing therapeutic massage or to see a physical therapist who's been trained in manual therapy techniques that can release your tight muscles and your trigger points and all of that. Particularly if you have a pelvic floor disorder such as um, vaginismus or anything that causes chronic pelvic pain or painful sex, it's really great to see a physical therapist, a pelvic floor physical therapist or a women's health physical therapist. But in the meantime, if you're looking for some things you can do on your own or just some self-treatment techniques you can use between visits to your therapist, uh, I have some ideas for you. Now, I am not a uh, master by any means, but I have quite a few tools at my house that I use myself and that I used in the past with clients. And so I just wanna share a few of these ideas with you and ways you can use them in your own life, particularly for um, some of the ways I use it, which is mainly for back pain. I have a lot of mid-back um, tension, right, in that middle back area. Also for neck and low back and hip and glute and abdominal stuff. We're gonna get into all of this and even psoas stuff, the hip flexors. So the psoas are, <laughs> it's always terrible when I do. <laughs> I have my little recorder on my laptop here, so sorry, you get a big shot of my pelvis. Anyway, let me show you some of the tools I have and use, and then I'm gonna give you little ideas for how you can use them yourself. So the first one I wanna show you is a foam roller. So this right here is my foam roller. It is well loved and well used. You can see there's little dents in here from where my son has poked his finger in it. Whew. If you're looking for a foam roller, search for a high density foam roller. That's what I use. Now there are other foam rollers uh, out there on the market that have, some of them have little knobs um, that look wonderful. Some of them are a little bit more squishy, such as the foam roller used in the melt method, which you should look into. I wish I knew more about the melt method. I think it is fantastic looking, but I'm not a practitioner and I don't know a whole lot about it other than some general stuff that I'll share later. But anyway, the melt method foam roller is a little bit uh, softer, I believe. But I have found great luck and great success with my high density foam roller. So you can search for these on Amazon, um, in your local sports stores. Uh, also, you can find any of this stuff that I'm sharing with you today also at yogaoutlet.com, which is a place that I really love to shop. I actually have a link that I will put under the, the notes so that you can go directly to my Yoga Outlet store, which has a little collection of some of these items that I'm gonna share with you today. So, foam roller. Another one that you might enjoy using are these little massage balls right here. Ooh, those are crazy, aren't they? Spiky little guys. So they actually have some give to them. I don't know if you can see, not a lot, but a little bit of give. So I'm gonna show you where you might wanna use these. I like to use these mainly on my feet, but I'll show you that in a sec. The next thing that you might consider using are either the poor man's version, which I always like, is two tennis balls, or the real version right here are uh, these uh, TheraBalls. They are so wonderful. These are called Therapy Balls Plus, and they have also a little bit of give to them. Actually, I find that they have a little more give than a tennis ball. A tennis ball is a little bit harder. These have a little more give and kind of a soft, sort of a, not really a soft coating, but just sort of a, I don't even know how to describe it. It's not like cold, hard plastic. It's a rubberized coating and it's, it's sort of soft feeling. So these are really nice. They are 
a hair bigger than a tennis ball, just a tiny bit bigger than a tennis ball. And again, I think they have a little more give to them. And then the final massage tool that anybody has, even with spending zero money at all, is their hands. <laughs> so you can just use your hands if you have no other massage tools out there. But let's get started actually talking about these therapy balls. So the therapy balls here that I have come in a little uh, carrying case, but I will say that I like to, so you can use the balls individually, but I actually really like to use them in the carrying case. So I'll show you how to use them in the carrying case and also individually. Now again, if you wanna try the poor man's version, you can use tennis balls and you can use the tennis balls individually which again I'll show you in just a bit how it looks with these but you can use it individually or you can put the two tennis balls to make it like this put two tennis balls in a tube sock so just like an old junky tube sock stick the tennis balls in there and you've pretty much got this so First, let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I like to use my therapy balls when they're in the case. I really like to use these for mid-back tension. So I like to place the balls where I, in their case where I feel like they would be on either side of my spine in that mid-back area. So then I like to lay on the, the little sack of balls. I'm sorry, that sounds really... <laughs> Oh, I like to lay on the balls so that each ball is on either side of my spine. And then I like to just ease over the balls and really melt into this uh, stretch, just an initial stretch where it provides some upward pressure against my back, which is pressing down against the balls. So from there, I like to roll the balls on either side of my spine, so along the muscles that are on either side of my spine, just up and down. So I have to use my legs to make this happen, but it feels really, really good as I just push my legs and roll the balls up and down either side of the muscles of my spine. I also like to, if I have neck tension, I like to roll myself up to the point where the balls are on either side of my neck muscles, along either side of my cervical spine, pressing into those lower neck muscles, right where the uh, upper traps are. So you're gonna feel that sensation right in those, sort of at the base of your cervical spine and the top of your thoracic spine. So down at that lowest, kind of the sticky outy lump that's at the very bottom of your neck. There's a spinal prominence that really sticks out and you'll feel that. And that is your seventh cer cervical vertebrae, your, your lowest cervical vertebrae. And it really kind of sticks out. There's quite a prominence there. And the muscles on either side of that area feel really nice to have these balls just kind of pressing into and massaging into that area. Again, this is a time when I really like to just be static and not really move a whole lot. Just kind of melt into it, providing a steady pressure into that area of muscles. It's really gonna be getting your trapezius muscles. It feels really nice. Now, if you really uh, wanna get into your hips, I find that it's nice to use the balls individually. So you can use uh, just one, take one out of the bag, or again, you can also use a tennis ball. And I love using these in my glutes and my deep, deep kind of outer hip area. So I'll show you how I like to do that. Essentially, I just sit on the TheraBall. So I just sit onto it and kind of sink into it and very, very carefully and slowly in little circles on any tender point that I may have in my gluteal area, I like to just sort of uh, put pressure on it, again, ease into it, be static at first, and then move in very slow little circles. Now the key is to melt into it at first, and that's I had mentioned that melt method at the beginning, which again, I don't know a whole lot about, but I think the main concept behind it from what I have learned is that you are, in, rather than vigorously you know, digging into an area or vigorously doing anything that's really gonna get deep in those tissues, you're actually allowing your body time to melt into the release. 
And so that is key because when you do these uh, manual therapy techniques on yourself, these self-massage techniques too vigorously, it can actually trigger a protective pain response from your body. It's natural for our bodies to respond to any type of pain by tensing up and holding and holding that tension even more. So it's important to rather than do things that, you know, dig into your muscles and do things that are painful, have that no pain, no gain mentality, it's actually often more effective to ease into things and melt into them rather than going so hardcore that your body just triggers that pain response. So I hope you can use that basic philosophy as we go forward. The other way you can use these balls, whether it's single or double in the little bag, is standing up against a wall. So you can actually put the ball, again, in your neck area, behind your neck area on either side, behind your shoulder area on either side. This is particularly effective if you have a one-sided tender point, or behind your bottom, or behind in your low back somewhere in there, and you can actually lean back into a wall. So leaning up against a wall. And then from there, pretend I'm leaning into a wall, just kind of move your back, arch, and round your spine, and use the wall as the firm surface, kind of like you had the ball on the floor before. Now you're using the wall, and you can really uh, vary the amount of pressure you put into the ball when you're doing it standing up. So I highly recommend that, especially if you are more sensitive and you are worried you're going to trigger that protective pain response, do it standing up rather than sitting on the ball or laying on the ball because that can be too intense with all of your body weight pressing down. So we have covered the balls or the poor man's version using tennis balls. Now let's talk about, oops. One of my balls just rolled away. Let's talk about the spiky balls. These are wonderful. I like to use them particularly for my hands. If I just need a little bit of stress relief, this is so delicious to just lightly roll them on my hands. I also like to use them under my feet. So I'll actually just place it on the ground and massage under my foot. You can do this at work. You can bring them to work, slip off your shoes, and just roll one at a time under your feet or both at a time under your feet. It feels wonderful. You can also add to a nice hamstring and calf stretch by putting your toes and the ball of your foot up and over the spiky ball on both sides or one side at a time and standing up and stretching out the hamstring and calf area. It feels wonderful. The other way you can use these spiky balls is with as an abdominal massage. So this is wonderful for anybody who has um, stomach issues, if you have any type of uh, digestive distress, and of course if this isn't too irritating for you, you can roll the balls in a, let's see, looking down, this would be a clockwise direction as I'm looking down. So you go to the right, you go up, you go across, and you go down. To the right, and up, and across, and down. It might not look like clockwise to you in the video, but again, what you wanna go is across to the right. I think in the video this is gonna look like your left, but it's my right. And then you go up the ascending colon to the left across the transverse colon and then down the descending colon. And just massage that in a nice circular direction. So that is the path that our food goes in. It goes up the ascending colon, across the transverse colon, and then down the descending colon into the rectum and out. So if you tend to have constipation, this abdominal massage can be a wonderful way to get things moving, and these spiky balls are, are nice. They have, again, just that little bit of give, and they're really not that sharp on the ends. They're really just very stimulating and can really help bring a lot of blood flow to the area and uh, mobilize the tissues. So I love these for abdominal massage. 
Now, let's talk about using our hands. And I'm gonna show you how to do a psoas release. So the psoas, the hip flexor, the psoas is the strongest hip flexor in the, in the body. So it tends to be very short and tight and often weak too in modern humans because we sit so much. So it's short and tight, but it's also not that strong because it doesn't get a lot of, uh, you know, activity throughout the day. <laughs> It gets a lot of sitting and not it's not really uh, utilized to its full potential and it, it does tend to be tight. So oftentimes the psoas can give us issues. So here's how I like to release my psoas. I like to lie down. I actually like to be supported up on something behind me if I can, something behind my back. Uh, a bathtub is actually a place you can do this really nicely. But then I like to bring my fingers, cut my fingers toward the inside of my pelvic bone. So bring your fingers around the outside of your pelvis, your what you think of as your hip bone when you say you're putting your hands on your hips. It's actually your pelvic bone. So bring your fingers around and feel that inward ledge, how you can really feel deep in there. Well, that part of your bony pelvis is actually covered with a muscle. That's called the iliacus. Then it blends with another muscle that starts actually deep in your lower spine, and that's called the psoas. So the iliacus and the psoas blend together to form the iliopsoas. So they actually then travel together over just to the side of your pubic bone, which you can't see, just to the side of your pubic bone, and then they hook onto the inside of your femur, the inside of your thigh bone. So they really travel down and kind of merge together and then go around and hook into that thigh bone. So what you wanna do is bring your hands to that inner, inner area where you can hook your fingers around, massage gently, and then go all the way down in your groin area, all the way till you hit the inner, top of the inner thigh the very top of the inner thigh bone. And that is the path of the iliopsoas muscle. So I, again, just like to use my fingers for this, my hands. I like to use my fingertips, a nice firm, broad stroke, uh, kind of a circular motion is nice. You can use a very a light, uh, natural organic oil for massaging. Jojoba oil is one that I really like to use or even coconut oil. Uh, you can use some soothing essential oils if you need to relax that muscle. You can use one of the Theraballs as well that can assist in the massage. So you can use the ball to really get in there deeply. I like to press one hand on top of the other if you wanna get in there. So to, to recap, we've covered so far getting in deep into the lower neck muscles, the mid-back muscles, the psoas. We've talked about hands, feet, and abdominal area. Now let's talk about really kind of broad strokes with the foam roller. So I like to use the foam roller for more broad strokes and also for stretching. So by broad strokes, what I mean is I like to lie on my back over the foam roller and do full sweeps along the muscles of my low back. So big broad strokes where I'm just moving along the entire back. I also like to really get in on, on broad strokes to my outer hip and thigh muscles. And there are so many different ways you can stretch using the foam roller. So I like to open my chest by laying over the foam roller. Oh, it feels so good, especially since so much of us spend time hunched over our desk, our computers, that kind of thing, texting. It's so nice to just open up the back of the neck, relax the neck down onto the roller, and open up the chest. I also love stretching out the front of the hip and psoas lying over the foam roller. I think that feels wonderful. And I like to get in deep to the quadratus lumborum. The quadratus lumborum is a little muscle on this, the very low back area on either side of the low back. I like to get in deep by kind of draping myself diagonally over the foam roller and then propping my neck and or my head and shoulder up against a couch or something so that I can really just sort of sink into the foam roller in that area. 
and just again melt into it and then move around. This is really a personal thing that you have to play around with on your own and see where the, the roller or the massage tool feels best for your body. But the key is don't go fast, don't go too hard, ease into it, melt into it, and just go where your body needs it. Everybody is gonna be different. And it is a wonderful, wonderful thing that you can do for yourself. A little act of self-care, a little act of self-love that you can do a couple of times a week, and it really doesn't need to take that long. Remember also my trick about taking these to the office and putting them under your feet and just rolling out your feet, slipping out of your shoes and rolling them um, under your feet when you're at work for a real delicious pick-me-up in the middle of the day when you're starting to feel that slump. The entire body is connected as far as fascia, which is the connected tissue that surrounds all of our muscles and all of our tissues. Fascia is everywhere. It connects the entire body from the toes all the way up to the head because of this network of connective tissue. And so really, anytime you massage or treat or take care of one place, it ultimately can unwind and unkink and relax other places because it's maybe releasing a tight muscle in one area that was causing you to be thrown out of alignment in another area, which was causing another area to be thrown out of alignment and another area. So really taking the time to release even just one area at a time is gonna ultimately help your whole body. So do a little bit a lot, just kind of like what I say with my exercise prescriptions. Uh, do a little bit a lot, a lot, take care of yourself, take this time and you'll, you're gonna feel better. You're gonna shine brighter. If you need help finding any of these massage tools, again, I do encourage you to check out the video notes below. I have a link to my store on Yoga Outlet. It's a great way to get all these tools in one place or you can shop around and see what else you can find from other locations. But either way, I hope you'll get your hands on one of these massage tools or at least use your free tool, your hands, and try out these techniques yourself. If this video has served you, please subscribe to my channel. I create new videos every week, often multiple each week, and I want to continue to bring pelvic health and safe core fitness and just a little bit of fun and sunshine to you. So subscribe to my channel and pop on over to my website, femfusionfitness.com. And remember, eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. Thank you for watching.